Okay, on to part two of our video, where we're now still looking at our airplane flying question, where it was going 350 kilometers off to the west, and at 55 kilometers per hour at a different angle. We still have our picture drawn, and if we look, we were uh, had already broken everything up into X and Y coordinates. We have a positive 38 for V2X and V2Y. For V1X and Y, we had its components down here. So we're currently at step three, where we're going to add up all the X components and all the Y components together. To add up the X components, we will take V1X and V2X and add them up. Well, adding them as vectors means you've got to consider the direction. So V1X is a negative 303.1. And V2X was uh, 38.9. So we're going to add those guys up and see where we're at. So we have a negative 303.1 and 38.9. We get a negative 264.2. <coughs> We do the same for the y vectors. You have v1y and v2y. Our v1y was 175 in the positive direction, and v2y was up of 38.9. That gives us 213.9. Again, these are all kilometers per hour. And that's as difficult as step three is. Add the components together, and you're ready to move on to step four, which is to use these two vectors to determine the overall resultant vector. X is in the negative direction. Negative was west. So from some starting point, I go west, 264.2 kilometers per hour. The second vector was positive 213, so we go north, 213.9 kilometers per hour, and your resultant goes from the beginning of the first to the end of the second. This will be our resultant. How will we calculate that? Well, we're on to good old Pythagoras theorem that r squared is 264 squared and 200 and 14 squared. So we add those up and take the square root. Drag this over. We have 264 squared and 214 squared. And square root of the answer gives us 340. We're rounding off terribly now. It's the process that's important. 340 kilometers per hour is the length or the magnitude of the resultant vector. We also have to give it a direction theta. So we're at our last step now to get the direction of this. We know that we went in the western direction first and then went north. So our convention will put west, then north. But we need to know what the angle was. To get the angle, I'll rely on the fact that tangent was opposite over adjacent. That means that to get the angle, I will take the opposite side, which is 213.9, divide by the adjacent side, 264.2, and I have to take the inverse tan of that fraction to get the angle. So we bring up, move it a little bit over, 213.9, divide by... 264.2 gives us an answer. Second tangent of the answer gives us 39 degrees. So we know at 39 degrees, west 39 north should be in our picture where we're looking. This is the total of those two vectors that were added up. That was part A of the question. We have enough time to do part B. Part B of the question was to determine its displacement after three hours. Well, we're at the end, so we know that the average velocity is 340 kilometers per hour 
west 39 north. You know the time is 3 hours, and the questions want you to determine the displacement. Well, we know that the velocity is displacement over time, so the displacement is the velocity times time. So we take our 340 kilometers per hour for 3 hours is 1,020 kilometers. Well, that is a distance and is not a displacement, but the displacement will be in the same direction as the velocity, which was west 39 north. And that is the end of our question. Hope that helps you out.